Hello and welcome to the first installment of the Project Fibonacci STEAM Update Series. This is a monthly update series where we follow professionals in the STEAM fields, our Project Fibonacci alumni, and our Young Innovator Series where we follow role models doing fantastic things in the STEAM field. For our first installment, we'll be talking about our five favorite discoveries of 2016. Number five. There's a new prime number now. No, I can't say it, but it's somewhere around 24 million. Uh, the number was discovered and is now the 49th prime number and is also the largest. Speaking of numbers, number four. SpaceX has successfully landed a rocket vertically. On April 8th, SpaceX successfully landed a rocket vertically by using a floating autonomous drone ship. In comic books and cartoons, you usually see rockets landing on planets and moons vertically, but in reality, achieving this feat is incredibly difficult and nearly impossible. On a completely unrelated note, number three. The Taiwanese K-Fish can officially walk up walls now. Researchers from the New Jersey Institute of Technology discovered a Taiwanese cave fish that is capable of walking up walls and has the same anatomical capabilities as an amphibian or a reptile. This doesn't seem huge, but it is a huge discovery in terms of evolutionary adaptation. This helps scientists prove that land-dwelling tetrapods evolved from prehistoric fish. Number two, speaking of evolving, our solar system has evolved. We now have nine planets, and no, it's not Pluto, it's actually Planet X. Pluto is no longer considered a major planet, but is one of five dwarf planets. Planet X, on the other hand, is hypothetically the ninth planet from the Sun. Presently, Planet 9 remains hypothetical, but, astrom but astronomers... But astronomers have calculated its orbit to be quite massive. If it does exist, it would take about 15,000 years to orbit the Sun. Speaking of planets, more specifically our planet, number one, Earth has two moons. NASA scientists discovered an asteroid that has been captured in Earth's orbit, making it a second satellite, or a second moon. Anyway, while Jasmine holds up Coffee Cup Guy, I'd like to introduce our first young innovator, Alex Wolf. So for the past few years, I've been really interested in technology and how it can impact people's lives. I actually got started in technology by building a website to help share recipes that I made with teens. So what I did is I created a website. And while in the process of developing this website, I actually fell in love more with the technology side rather than cooking. So I began to experiment with software development and I made my own app development company called Con for Apps. From there, I looked into things like hardware. And for the past few years, I've been working on developing hardware and the intersection of hardware and software and how that can actually impact people's lives and help people, for example, with my CAS project, um, help save people's limbs from being uh, amputated due to complications inside of casts. So for example, if I touch the moisture sensor right here, you can see that this change is reflected on this moisture dial here, showing that there's a moisture value of 131, and this needle provides a nice visual representation of the different ranges. So now I have a wet paper towel here, which has a little bit more, more, more moisture on it. If I apply the wet paper towel to the sensor, you can see that the needle jumps up a lot higher and the value increases. In essence, the idea for having tech came from just interacting with and seeing blind and visually impaired people walk around in their community. So, uh, regularly, a blind or visually impaired person might use a cane to navigate, but you might not want a cane in the instances of crowded hallways, or even if you might not just want to carry your cane around. So, what I did is I developed a small wearable device that, instead of actually using uh, a long cane to feel what's around you, it uses infrared light. And this infrared light measures the distance from the blind and visually impaired user to an object in their surroundings. And based on this distance, my device will vibrate, not only letting them know that an object is there, but exactly where it is in their path. So if a blind or visually impaired person has these devices all over their body, they can actually generate a 3D representation of their surroundings without needing to see them. Confer Apps is the name of an app development business that I created back in 2013. 
On Conifer Apps, I publish a variety of mobile apps. It also serves as a test bed for ideas that I might want to integrate into my hardware and software projects. Both Castminder and Haplotech have taken me to places that I never imagined that they would. So, um, I think in 2015, I entered Haplotech into the Central New York Science and Engineering Fair, or CNYSEF. And at the CNYSEF, I was one of the two recipients of the Grand Prize Award. My advice to anyone interested in STEAM is there's no limit to what you can accomplish inside your very own home. Both Castminder and Haptotech are projects that I created without any sophisticated equipment, without any lab, and I did this mostly just by learning by myself how to do these different projects. Additionally, um, if you're interested in engineering and electronics and math, I highly recommend that you take something called Project Lead the Way courses, which your school might or might not have. These courses provide you an in-depth um, introduction into different concepts in the engineering and math related fields.